The Church Speaks, an episode where the Holy Father, the Pope, speaks about this year as he creates the year of consecrated life. Good morning. My name is Father Daniel McNamara. I am the rector of the Jesuits of Davao. And I'd like to talk to you about the letter of consecrated men and women, which is the letter the Holy Father has dictated for this particular year, the year dedicated to what he calls consecrated life. So let me begin this series of talks on the letter of the present Holy Father by giving ourselves an orientation. Just what will I be doing in the next several weeks with you on this broadcast? Since our programs happened during this week, let me first of all go through the letter of the Holy Father who is coming during this week. Well, it's been after one week. In a cursory or brief fashion as a starter. A kind of walkthrough of the letter is what I intend in this broadcast. That'll take us some 13 weeks because I see 13 major points in the letter the Holy Father has given. And so that will cover the first half of this series of talks. After that, I will come back and I'll talk with a deeper reflection, with a deeper orientation as to these, what is the meaning of these 13 points that the Holy Father points out in his letter. So then, I begin by bringing your attention to what the title is all about. What is consecrated life? So I put quotation marks on that. Of course, the full meaning will be the reason for this series of talks over the course of these next several weeks and even months. But we begin by simply looking today at the key words in the title themselves, consecrated and life. The word consecrated comes from two Latin words, con and sacra. The con means together or with. The sacra means holy or dedicated to God or given to God. So when we bring these two parts together, we then have the word consecrated. So consecrated life refers then to a life totally, altogether given to God. Now, I can imagine some of you may be wondering, but wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Isn't everyone called to such a life? Does not Vatican II, for instance, in its many documents 50 years ago, expressly state that all peoples are called to holiness? So why does the Holy Father now have this special letter? That's a good question, and this issue will be addressed by me over these next several weeks. But now let's look at a short answer just to give us this orientation. Remember, Pope Francis steps into the leadership of the Universal Church after several popes who have helped us actualize the teachings of Vatican II in various ways. We've had these universal themes such as, you remember, the year of faith, the year of the laity, and now the year of consecrated life. So you can see that Francis is speaking in the context of Catholic awareness that all are called to holiness indeed, and yet not all are called in the same way. So let me end there. I'll pick up this theme again next time. Good morning. This Holy Mass is brought to you in collaboration with uh, Ricardo O. Santiago, Stuart Nancy Santiago, APM Ad and Promo Management, Alex P. Montañez and Family, and Flow Management and Investment Corporation. Ernie and Mercy Evangelista, St. John Paul II College of Davao, Greenbet Group Philippines Incorporated, Tat and Gigi Coronel and Children, Chino Chan, Casey Neng and a lot, Royal Bread House Incorporated, Quilan's Food House, Teresita Villa Abrilie, Tilino Trucking Services, iCrafter Optical Incorporated, Davao Durian Laundry Services Company, Consolidated Plywood Incorporated, Chardon, Esper Laundry Services, Comfort Realty Corporation, Ampi Casas and Family, Vita Rivera's Bookkeeping Services Company, Renato and Purita Lorenzo, Davao LB Junk Store, Attorney and Mrs. L.E.R. Britannia, Rudy and Evangeline Mepico and Family, Anonymous, Catalina Viuda de Bacolod, Mrs. Fe Liamido and Family, Phil Ami Salas, University of Mindanao, Davao Doctors College, Rudy and Jean Subiaco, St. Clair Caltech Station, Great Wall Trading, Ideal Pawn Shop Corporation, Ahensha Kimson Corporation, Davao Diamond Industrial Supply, Davao Bonifacio Motors, and Ramline Resources Incorporated. Offering of the Holy Mass. Accept Most Holy Trinity. 
this sacrifice fulfilled at one time by the divine word and now renewed on this altar through the hands of your priest. I unite myself to the intentions of Jesus Christ, priest and victim, that I may be entirely offered for your glory and for the salvation of all people. Through Jesus Christ, with Jesus Christ and in Jesus Christ, I intend to adore your eternal majesty, to thank your immense goodness, to satisfy your offended justice, and to beseech your mercy for the church, for my dear ones, and for myself. We pray for the intentions of our regular sponsors, choir members, donors, offerers, and volunteers of this Holy Mass, especially the sponsoring groups, Mega World Sun Trust Properties Management and Staff, and Salesforce Eagles Division, headed by Engineer Leonora Gutierrez, Jesus the Healer Community International, headed by Mrs. Matilde Lacap. Thanksgiving intentions and blessings of San Yil's family, Jess and Melody Dizon on their 50th wedding anniversary, Lockup family and Gutierrez family. Birthday intentions of Jess Dizon and Isa Marie Gumban on January 20, 2015. Recovery and healing of Mila Villa Abrilie, Jermaine Chu, Rudolfo and Victoria Potente. For the eternal repose of Luciana, Paciencia, Porferio, Telesmora, and Dario. Prayers for the sick. Father, your Son accepted our sufferings to teach us the virtue of patience in human illness. Hear the prayers we offer for our sick brothers and sisters. May all who suffer pain, illness, or disease realize that they are chosen to be saints and know that they are joined to Christ in his sufferings for the salvation of the world who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever Amen Dear brothers and sisters Good morning, good morning. The theme of our celebration today is the feasts of the Santo Nino. The Philippines has the longest Christmas season in the world, with our celebration extending to the Feast of Santo Nino. The Vatican recognizes our strong faith and devotion to the Christ child that we are encouraged to celebrate his feast today. This year, makes our festivities doubly significant and joyful with the presence of Pope Francis in the Philippines. The ground in which we stand is our faith in a merciful God who teaches us to accept our broken human condition with serenity and peace knowing fully well that healing will come to us like little children in the protective arms and loving embrace of Jesus. May the spirit of the Christ child dwell in our hearts as we receive the gospel of joy, the gospel of God's mercy and compassion, which is the message of our Pope Francis, the Vicar of Christ. Today is also the opening of the National Bible Week with the theme, Sharing God's Word, Empowering the Poor, Transforming the Land. To officiate the Holy Mass is Reverend Father Orlando Angelia, the Eucisian priest and spiritual director of Jesus, the Divine Healer Community International. The choir during the Holy Mass is the Couples for Christ of Davao City. Come, let us joyfully and celebrate the banquet of love. 
Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son, begotten from all ages, humbled himself as a child in Nazareth and became subject to Mary and Joseph. Grant that we may learn from his example to embrace your will in all things and holding fast to the dignity of all, serve our lowly brothers and sisters with open hands and gentle heart. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Isaiah prophesies that through the child who shall be called Prince of Peace, God will grant peace and rejoicing to his people. The first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder, dominion rest. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains. By judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
God loves us and has made us his adopted children in Christ. Paul reminds us to live up to our dignity by leading a holy and blameless life. The second reading. From the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish with, before him. In love, he destined us for adoption to himself through Jesus Christ, in accord with the favor of his will, for the praise of the glory of his grace that he granted us in his beloved. Therefore, I too, bring hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus and of your love for all the holy ones, do not cease giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the Lord of our Lord, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of glory may give you a spirit of wisdom in the revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call, what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. became flesh and made his dwelling among us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. People were bringing children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced the children and blessed them, placing his hands on them. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we have a two-in-one celebrations, the Feast of the Santo Nino, the famous uh, feast uh, in the Philippines in honor of the Holy Child, the baby Jesus. And also today we open the National Bible Week and uh, of course the church reminds us to be good listeners and doers of the word of god 
Brothers and sisters, I believe that children have good qualities that adults like us can imitate. I remember the song of Air Supply, the line, the famous line that uh, may also give us these good qualities of children. And the song, the lines, goes like this. In the eyes of a child, there is joy, there is laughter, there is hope, there is trust, a chance to shape the future. For the lessons of life, there is no better teacher than the look in the eyes of a child. Of course, by looking at a child, we can learn many things. No wonder why Jesus, in today's gospel, exalts children before his disciples, saying, Let the children come to me, do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. You know, the attitude of Pope Francis in his apostolic visit nowadays in the Philippines mirrors the attitude of Jesus. You know, Pope Francis greeted the children with kiss, with embrace, and a tenderness and warmth. And it reminds me you know, of that gospel reading of today, how Jesus also blessed children, how he embraced them and kissed them with all that love that it can, he can show them. Of course, brothers and sisters, Jesus in today's gospel did not only embrace and kiss children, he even made them models for those who want to enter heaven. That's why Jesus says, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. These words of Jesus are like revolutionary teachings at this time, since we all know that children, like women, were not given important role in the Jewish culture. During the time of Jesus, children had no rights. Children, women, and slaves were considered together as inferior members of society. It is indeed remarkable and revolutionary that in a society like that, where children were not given important role and respect, Jesus, on his part, has showed great respect, love, and concern for them. Jesus even goes farther when he made the children models for all of us, models for discipleship, and even models for those who want to be members of the kingdom of God. Today, we celebrate the Feast of Santo Nino here in the Philippines. And we know that Filipinos love Santo Nino. I believe that all Catholic families, they have the images of Santo Nino in their homes, even in their cars. And those businessmen, even they also place the images of Santo Nino inside their business establishments. But sometimes, so funny, they put the image of the Santo Nino side by side with Buddha. Maybe, hindi, pag hindi sila susuertihin kay Santo Nino, andiyan si Buddha, or the other way around. No? But brothers and sisters, our devotion to the Santo Nino should not only be limited in liturgical celebration, in prayer, because our devotion should lead us to imitate the examples of Jesus who became a child. Allow me to cite two of these qualities that we can imitate in Jesus who became a child. First, the Santo Nino shows us the humanity of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. This is to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah in the first reading of today that says, For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder, dominion rest. Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophecy because he is the word made flesh. He assumed our human nature and became a child in order to show us his unconditional love. God does not despise humanity because he embraced by embracing our human nature, 
except sin, of course, by becoming a child, by becoming a Santo Nino. Jesus is at home with our humanity. He, heard, he healed our brokenness. He restored our sinful human nature to its original beauty and holiness as willed by God at the beginning of creation. That's why St. Paul in the second reading of today says, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens, as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blemish before Him. Thanks to Jesus, our sinful nature is now healed. Our sinful nature is restored to its original beauty, especially if we cooperate to the grace of God. Jesus, by becoming a child, by becoming a son to Nino, loves humanity, and He is at home with it, because to be truly human is to imitate Christ, who cares, who shows tenderness, kindness, to the least, the last, and the lost. My dear friends, the Feast of the Santo Nino reminds us that God encounters our humanity so that this, in this encounter with God, God can make us holy. That is why it is permitted to be human, because to be human is to be imitators of the humanity of Christ. Some people, when they commit sin, and they would say, Sapagkat ako'y tao lamang and they justify their sins. But that is wrong. God is truly human, 100% human and 100% divine. And yet, He shows us what it means to be human. That is why, brothers and sisters, Jesus shows us the way. He's so faithful to His human vocation during His public life, especially being compassionate, caring, and tender to the poor. The care, the service, the joy, the love that we also show to others, especially the least, the last, and the lost, make us also like the Santo Nino, making our humanity a channel of God's loving presence, mercy, and compassion. The humility of God becoming man encourages us to be humble in front of God and others. If we are humble, we surely become like a child. We become childlike, which would make us also Christ-like at the end. May the baby Jesus, the Santo Nino, help us to be truly human according to the humanity of Christ, to be humble like Jesus himself, so that the words of Jesus in today's gospel will be truly realized in each one of us. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. Amen. Please all stand. And together we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through Him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, was spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, apostolic church. I confess one baptism, the forgiveness of sins. 
and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Child, let us give thanks to the Father who has made us His beloved children in Christ and given us the spirits of wisdom and understanding. Let us remember in a special way all the children of the world as we pray. Listen to the prayers of your children, Lord. Listen to the prayers of your children, Lord. For our Holy Father, bishops and church leaders, may they continue to proclaim by word and example that God's kingdom belongs to children, to the poor and the humble. We pray. Listen to the prayers of your children, Lord. For children who beg, scavenge for food, or are forced into labor, may our civil leaders work to give them hope for a better tomorrow. We pray. Listen to the prayers of your children, Lord. For children of broken homes and those who suffered because of neglectful and uncaring parents, may adults take the responsibility toward them seriously, love and care for them, and show them the beauty of life. We pray. Listen, Listen to the prayers of your children, Lord. For adults, may they never lose the spirit of a child and so live with one another in friendship, freedom, and openness. We pray. Listen, Listen to the prayers of your children, Lord. For all our families, may we take the challenge to face the problems connected with the promotion of the family and marriage so that our children may grow up in a healthy, happy, and religious environment. We pray. Listen to May our sponsors, benefactors, and friends look at the Holy Family as an example of being a generous family. We pray. Father, hear the petitions of your children. Give us the heart of a child so that we may welcome God's kingdom among us and receive the reward promised to the humble. We ask you this for Christ your Son, our Lord. Amen.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. God, our Creator, we offer the gifts of bread and wine to recall the childhood of your only Son. Let our offering become the sacrifice of Him who brought forgiveness and peace to the world. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our, our Lord. For in the feast of this all-filled mystery, though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation and call his straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the founts of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church has spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Romolo, our Bishop, George, Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and to all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the hope of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace, peace be with you.
behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, the man has worthy to enter under my roof. And only say the word, so shall be. National Prayer for the Papal Visit. God of mercy and compassion, we come to you in our need and lift up to you our nation as we prepare for the apostolic visit of Pope Francis. After every invocation, we say together, Bless your church, Lord. Bless your church, Lord. That we may be faithful to the Pope the Vicar of Christ on earth. Bless your church, Lord. That we may be eager to meet and listen, Pope Francis. Bless your church, Lord. That we may be compassionate with the poor and the needy. Bless your church, Lord. That the papal visit may be safe from all harm and free from all evil. 
Bless your church, Lord. That we may always maintain a sense of order, discipline, and charity during the papal visit. Bless your church, Lord. That the Pope may arrive safely back in Rome after his apostolic journey. Bless your church, Lord. Let us pray. God, our Father, we are all your children. Make of us a nation of mercy and compassion, discipline and charity, eager to meet Pope Francis. Make us a nation of holiness and heroism, security and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, you have nourished us at the banquets in honor of the child born of the Virgin. We pray that we may advance in wisdom and grow daily in faith and works of love so that we may find favor in your sight. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.